A tiny house isn't just a building, it's a home. It's a place where you live, where you love, where you nurture relationships, where you grow and expand as a human being. Today we've traveled to Squamish in British Columbia to tell the story of a charming young couple and learn about their journey into downsized living. Hey Tamara! Hi Bryce, so nice to see you. Lovely to meet you. Hey Good Bryce, Colin. good to see you. Pleasure to meet you mate. Oh my goodness, this house is beautiful. Thank Thanks you. so much. How long have you been living here now? Just about, about a year. year. Yeah. yeah. And how are you finding tiny house life? We love it, yeah. yeah. It's so nice to know where everything is and not just have all this stuff that you like don't even really use. Transitioning into tiny house life was about a three year process for us. We started slowly downsizing all of our stuff. Every couple months we would kind of go through everything and then get rid of a couple things and there was a few things we had to hold on to for quite a while before we could let them go. By the end of it, we just felt so much lighter, like a weight had been lifted off of our shoulders. Now we have just exactly what we need and no more and it feels amazing. Our stuff was owning us. So we just thought this is a ridiculous way to live. Let's try something different. And here we are. It almost has a kind of quirkiness to it, the way that it's been built too, doesn't it? It does. It was important to us to have something that looked a little bit different. Um, the wavy shingles were kind of an added feature that were whimsical. And we have a deer on the front that has been with us through every apartment that we've lived in. So it was important for us to have him on this adventure. You have managed to find an ideal parking space for this home as well, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to find a place to put it here in Squamish? It wasn't easy by any means. We had put an ad on Facebook and we had spoken to a lot of people. We actually even went door to door with flyers. They had our photo on them and a picture of our house and we kind of just explained what we were doing. Some people were like, no, slam the door. And some people were like, that's great, but we just, we're not, we don't know what that is like legally. It's kind of a weird area, but we had ended up meeting the people that we live with now through Facebook. That's how we connected. So that's kind of how we did it. And do you just work it out that you pay a little bit of rent here every week or how does that work? Yeah, so we pay $450 a mm -hmm. month and that includes everything. And is that a fold up deck that you've got on the house as well? It is, yeah. We wanted to have something that was really easy, but we wanted to have a space outside that we could utilize without having all this extra stuff that we had to find a way to move when we wanted to be in transport. So with this deck, it just folds right up and then the metal pieces on the side hold it up with locks and we just drive away. So what size is this house actually? Uh, the house is 22 feet long by eight and a half wide. Uh, so we built over the wheel wells, which gives a little more interior room. It doesn't look big from the outside, but from inside, you'll see that it, uh, it's not too bad. All right, well, I'm excited to take a look, see All what right. you've done. Okay. All right. Oh my goodness, this home is wonderful. Thanks. I love the use of all of the sacking. It gives it so much character. Yeah, we were looking for a low cost option because curtains can be really expensive and we wanted to reuse stuff as much as possible. So those are actually coffee sacks that we got from our favorite coffee place um, for free. And then I just repurpose them into curtains. And your cats have a wonderful playground here as well, don't they? They do, yeah. They pretty much run this tiny house. We have this cat tree for them and they love it. They spend most of their time on it. And uh, we have their litter box just hidden away under the stairs here, which is a nice space saver for us. And so this is the living room area and it's such a lovely space to be greeted into the house, isn't it? It feels very warm. It is. And I'm so glad you said that because we wanted people to feel that when they came in. We wanted it to be really welcoming and relaxing as well for us. This little couch that we found fits perfectly at the reuse it center. It's like a piece of a sectional. It was just a one-off magical piece and uh, we think it just fits really well. The moment that I entered this house, my eye was just drawn to that countertop as well. Thank yeah. you. Sean was just, that's what he had his heart set on and it turned out better than we ever thought that it would. It's just, it's such a, like a, a showpiece in this house. It almost looks like the cabinets, like the tree has grown around them. It's so unique and I haven't seen anything in a tiny house like that before. We love this kitchen. We do a lot of cooking and I do a lot of baking. So I spend most of my time in here and I wanted it to just feel really special. 
special. What were some of the really important decisions that you made in this kitchen? A lot of counter space. I know a lot of tiny houses had like little ovens with like the cooktops, but we didn't want to have our counter space eaten up by that just because our house is only 22 feet long. So we wanted to be able to just display the beautiful black walnut and um, keep things really clean. We knew we couldn't have a tiny, tiny fridge because we're foodies. So this works out absolutely perfect for us. And then behind us here is the bathroom. And you have managed to create a really good amount of space in this area, haven't you? Yeah, we didn't want to have a super tiny washroom. That was something that was important to us as well. And uh, because we wanted to fit the bathtub in, that allowed us to have a little bit of a bigger bathroom. So what size is this bathtub actually? It's about four feet by two feet. And you guys fit in that? Yeah, I fit in it comfortably. I love it. I don't know if I believe you on that one, <laughs> so I might have to give it a shot myself. Yes, Go I think it. that you should. Okay, Yeah. all right. Climb on in here, oh. and there you go. I am in the tub. How does it feel? My knees are almost around my neck, <laughs> but I am a lot taller than you both, and I can actually see how this could be comfortable. Yeah. Well, I'm only five foot two, so it works for me. And I see you've got a composting toilet there as well. Yeah, we have a nature's head toilet. What was the process of adjusting to using a composting toilet like? It was a little bit weird. It's just like when we moved into the tiny house, when you live one way your whole life, and then you are completely going into something that's different. It's always a bit of like a adjustment period, but I don't think we would go back. We love having it in a tiny house and we also love how environmentally friendly it is and that we're doing something different. Well, I suppose I should pull myself out of the bathtub so we can go have a look at the rest of the house. <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> So you have the storage loft up there as well? Yeah, we like to keep it really clean uh, for when guests pop by. Sometimes people come by unexpected, they want a little place to crash in the tiny house so they can just climb up there. You can't sit up there, but you can definitely lie down really comfortably. And you just access that by the ladder that you've got stored up there. Yeah, mm. you got it. The skylight is another really nice addition to the house as well. Yeah, we wanted to have a lot of windows in the house to bring in that outside light. So the loft is accessed via the stairwell and it looks like you've actually managed to get a decent amount of storage in here as well. Yeah, this is actually Sean's closet. So he just has a shelf where he can fold some of his stuff and hang it. And then we also have a little bit of storage here for like some of the cat stuff and then just miscellaneous stuff at the bottom. So this is Sean's closet. Where's yours? It's upstairs. Should we check it out? Yeah. This loft is such a great space. And who's this? That is Samuel L. Katzen. Hi Samuel, you're looking very comfortable there. I won't steal your spot. You've got the skylight again right there so you can watch the stars as you sleep. Mm -hmm. We love to open it in the summer. It gives us such a nice breeze. We love stargazing and sometimes we like to pop up to the roof for a beer. You can actually sit up on the roof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is seriously cool. <laughs> that also kind of really extends the livable space in the house, doesn't it? It totally does. I was joking with Sean when uh, we decided to put that in. I said, yeah, if you ever irritate me, I can just like get to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all of your clothes storage over there. Yeah, I get the, uh, the nice big closet. Sean was very, very kind to let me have the closet upstairs. Very charitable of you. <laughs> I try. Talking about that, living in a tiny house together as a couple, what was the compromise like? What was the process like of learning to live in a small space together? It's actually made our relationship probably better, mm -hmm. funny enough. Communication, yeah. I think that's probably the key. And yeah, our relationship is a lot stronger. I would say this last year was a little bit of a rough one. Getting into the tiny house finally a year ago, it was a very life-changing experience. You both actually had a little bit of strife building this house as well. It wasn't a complete fairy tale moving into the tiny house. You guys were working with a builder on Vancouver Island and not all builders are great, are they? Do you want to tell me a little bit about the experience with that and how you actually overcome the challenge of working with a builder that wasn't doing what he said he was going to do? Yeah, so we had decided to um, hire a builder and it just didn't go the way that we had expected it to. It turned out to be pr a pretty heartbreaking experience for us. We were left with a house 
that uh, we couldn't live in and it had so many deficiencies and problems. We were lucky enough to have our friend Ben come in and help us fix everything and make our vision into a reality. And now we, we love our space so much. It was such a learning experience. People who are going with builders really, really need to do their research. You really need to make sure that you trust that person and um, that you have a really great relationship. But uh, we wouldn't trade it for anything because we have this beautiful home and we've met so many incredible people through our experience. And I think that is worth more than um, holding on to the negative. What would you say you love most about this home? I think for me, it's probably our relationship, how it's changed and how we're just a lot closer and how our relationship is a lot stronger through the whole process. I'd agree. We, uh, are thinking we're probably gonna stay in the tiny for probably another five years. We'd like to be able to save up enough money for a mortgage, but uh, when we do move out of the tiny, we'll definitely be keeping it um, for a house for family to come and friends. It's been a really big part of our lives and our adventure has been so crazy so far. There's a lot of emotion and a lot of heart in this house. Despite all of the challenges in the construction of this home, I'm so happy to see you both really happy and enjoying this space now. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. Thank you, Bray. Thanks for coming by. Building a tiny house, it's a big deal. There's laughter, sometimes there's tears, but at the end of all of the strife, when you can sit back and enjoy a horse trough bathtub in your tiny house with a beer and a candle and a book, it somehow makes all of the hard times very worthwhile.